Hi, this is Mark Byer from MarTech Hero. In today's short video, I'm just going to show you guys how to monitor your sending email IP on blacklist monitors to make sure that your IP does not uh, erroneously show up on a blacklist. So what is an email IP blacklist? Basically, an email IP blacklist is a list of IP addresses that have been identified as a source of spam or virus or malicious activity. If an email is sent from an address that is on the list, it's blocked and never gets through to its intended recipient. So unless you want your emails bouncing around like pinballs, keep them off the blacklist. Unfortunately, many innocent senders have been wrongfully added to these lists, so you need to check to be sure that your IP address is not on one of them. So how do we do that? So in your marketing email program that you use to send out your email communications or in your marketing automation tool that you use, when you set it up, one of the options often is to have a dedicated IP. So when that dedicated IP is set up, they should tell you what the IP actually is. But just in case uh, you want to make sure that you know what it is or you want to check it, here's one quick way to determine what your IP is. So to show you how to find the IP, the easiest way is just to look it up in Gmail. So I set up this test uh, Gmail account and I just subscribed to a newsletter from the Washington Post. So I'm gonna click on that email. So over here, you'll see this little menu item. And if I select it and I scroll down, one of the options says show original. So I'm gonna select that. And then right up here at the top, it very easily displays what the sending IP is, which in this case is 54.240.63.243. So that's the IP that the Washington Post uses to send their emails. Now, you don't have to have Gmail to find this. Uh, you could look in the header section of the mail. You just display headers, which is down here below. If you scroll through all of this, you could locate... Like right here, you can locate where the sending IP is. So that's another way to find it. But I find it easiest just to go to the original message on Google, Gmail that is, and just it lists right here. It also lists some other um, kind of helpful tools. It tells you if you pass SPF, DCAM, and DMARC, um, which in this case, obviously it all passed. But this is a great testing tool for that as well. Okay, so now where do we go to have our IP addresses, our dedicated IPs tracked, and so we can be alerted if they ever show up on a blacklist. The tool I like to use, and it's free, is over at hetrixtools.com. And Hetrix Tools is actually an uptime monitor. Uh, it'll give you alerts if your website goes down in a blacklist monitor. They do have uh, free and paid versions. I find the free version uh, satisfactory and does everything I needed to do. Uh, but just to look at the blacklist monitoring pricing, as you can see, if, if you use the free one, you can monitor up to 32 IP addresses. Um, it's checked every day, every 24 hours, which seems frequently enough for my needs. Uh, you can go up higher if you want. Uh, like I said, if you have a whole lot of IPs you want to check, you probably have to go to the, one of the higher plans. Um, but I find that the free one is is does enough for me, and that's the one we're going to use in this this video. So just to test it out real fast, I'm gonna go back over to products and uh, blacklist monitor. And right here, uh, if we input a IP address right here, it'll just instantly check right now. So I'm just gonna paste in uh, an IP address here. This is actually an IP that's used by uh, Google, so we expect it to pass everything. And it's checking all of these different blacklists that are out there. And it checks about 100 of them or 91 of them actually. Um, so you can see that this one, it, it passes. Not listed means it's not listed on the blacklist. Now, if I test this again with another IP address, and, and this one I know is a spam sending IP address, and I recheck this, 
once again, query in all the different blacklist services. And you see it, it ended up finding it on two of the 90 here. Uh, unfortunately for this particular IP, the spam house blacklist is one of the worst ones to be on. Um, they're one of the major blacklists that are used by many different organizations. So if you're on this one, your email will probably have huge deliverability problems. So then the question arises, which blacklist of all of these should I care about? Because there's a lot of very small blacklists here that even if you're on it, it probably won't make a lick of difference on your email deliverability rates. So of those 90 or 91 blacklists that we saw in that previous list, there's really only about eight or so that I and most other people think that you should actually care about. And these are the main eight. So spam house blacklist is one of the biggest ones. Uh, it, it list includes emails from known spam operations and sources and services. So this one, if you're on this one, you're going to definitely see a huge drop in your deliverability. The composite blocking list is actually another list that's run by Spam House, and it only includes IPs that exhibit malicious behavior, such as spam bots, uh, dictionary attacks, or open proxies, etc. The XBL exploits block list, uh, it mainly just lists hijacked IP addresses. Spam cop is another big one. It primarily uses uh, spam traps and spam reports to generate a reputation score. So a spam trap is a fake email address that's out there on the web. And if you use it, let's say you scrape the web and you pull this fake uh, spam trap email address and then you end up emailing it to it, uh, you'll show up on a spam trap list and be added to many different blacklists. This passive spam block list, uh, this relies on spam traps, uh, much like spam cop. The invaluement one, uh, th th is an IP based blacklist that mainly lists IPs with high spam percentages. So if you send a lot of emails and you get a lot of high spam reports on it, you could end up on this blacklist. Barracuda is another big one. They're, their Barracuda anti-spam software is used in many different appliances and uh, software. In many web hosting systems, such as cPanel, if you have your own website, um, that use this by default. And finally, Sender Score. This is return path sender reputation system, and it's also used by large email service providers and corporate email systems. So these are definitely the ones you want to stay off of. I'm going to show you how to use this and have the Hetrix tools automatically monitor the IPs that you are concerned about every day and alert you if there's a problem. You just hop back over to HetrixTools.com. If you don't already have an account, like I said, this is a free account, uh, you just go up to free sign up and then you just fill in this information and register and it'll kick you off a confirmation email and you can log in from there. I actually already have an account with them, so I'm just gonna log in. So I just entered my email address and my password, and I'm gonna log in. And then as you can see, there's just a simple dashboard here. We're gonna go to the blacklist monitors. And then since we haven't added a blacklist monitor yet, uh, this dialog pops up. So it says enter the IP address or host name. So I'll copy one of the ones we just testing. This is the Google one, actually. Uh, you can give this a label. So I can just say Google IP. Call it whatever you want. And then uh, the default contact, that's just, it's going to email the same email address that I have tied to this particular account. So I'm going to add a monitor. And it's added right here, and you can see that it's checking it right now as we speak. We're going to go ahead and add one more. So I'm going to go back up here and click this Add Monitor. It does pop up with the prior IP address you have, uh, but we're just going to overwrite that. This is the one that I know is a, a spam IP. So we'll just call it spam IP, and we'll add this monitor. So now this one's also being checked.
as that one's being checked, you'll notice that this first one, the Google one, it actually has zero hits. So to see the whole list, I could actually click on this and scroll down and it'll show us every IP blacklist that it tested. And as you can see, it's not on any of them. If you are getting uh, results on some of these ones that you know maybe aren't the most important blacklist to be concerned about, you can just simply hit this ignore link and it'll ignore checking that one. So you don't get email alerts if you appear on that one when in actuality you might not really care. So I'm going back to the dashboard and the spam one, as we thought, it's showing two. And the, the spam house ones, which is like the worst one to be listed on and this will really hurt your devel deliverability. Back, back to the dashboard again. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, every day, every 24 hours from the time that you set this up, it's going to go out and it's going to run these, these IP blacklist checks again. If you're not added to any additional blacklist than you were the previous day, so for example, on the spam IP one, if tomorrow I'm still only at two, you will not get an email. However, if this changes at all, you would get an email alert. So this is a great way to stay on top of it. And like I said, the best thing is this is free. So it, it, it's a great tool to use. I highly recommend it. Also, if you Google around, you'll probably see some other uh, tools that check IP blacklisting. I, I just found that this one's the best. Uh, whether it's paid or free, I, I just think it, it, it's the most accurate. And, and one way you can kind of check this is you can actually go to, for example, this opening up this report again, the spam house one. So in a new tab, so I'm going to go to check that spam house.org. And I'm just going to get this right from the source and look up that IP that our blacklist monitor tool says was on the, the spam list of uh, the blacklist here. So as you can see, it is, it's on this, this blacklist. So our tool is successfully showing that this is showing up on Spam House. And likewise, I could put in what it returned as a clean IP address, which is one of the IPs used by Google. I'm gonna search that, and you get this nice little smiling robot that says it has no issues. So that's one way to check these things. So just to show you, why, why do I need to check? How hard is it to look up a list? And aren't these things always accurate? Well, they're not. And let me show you one example of a paid one. So I just jumped over to another site called Monspark. This is a company that monitors uptime reports. Uh, it actually does quite a bit of things, SSL monitoring, URL monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. But if you spend uh, $80 a month, which seems a little pricey to me, uh, you get this IP blacklist monitoring as one of the features. So you might think, well, 80 bucks a month for IP blacklist monitoring, this thing must just hit a grand slam, hit it out of the park. Uh, it must do such a good job. But in actuality, it, it actually doesn't do a great job. And you'll find this with a lot of these IP blacklist checkers. So I actually have an account with Monspark that I was testing things out. And I'm going to just jump over to my account. And then this is the same IP address that we just tested with Hetrix tools that says it's on the spam house list. And then we verified that by going to spam house that is in fact on that list. And then this is Monspark. And this is like, like I said, this is $80 a month for this. So they claim they checked 237 different blacklists, which is a huge number of blacklists. So I'm guessing a lot of those are very, very, very minor blacklists uh, if they have any weight whatsoever. But anyway, it says that it found zero hits. So if we go down, it'll say everything, green check mark is good. So it says everything is just great. So if I just kind of search through here, uh, you'll see a lot of names I don't really recognize. But um, let's see if we could find right here, the spamhouse.org, this SBL one. That one we verified that we're definitely 
this this IP that I'm checking, I know for a fact it's on this IP blacklist. Um, but Monspark, for some reason, gets a clean bill of health. Uh, and this monitor, I, I set this up three days ago, and I actually, uh, just to be fair on this, I actually reached out to them to their support saying that all the IP addresses I'm entering, every IP address I've ever entered, it always says it's 100% good uh, when it's not. Um, they just said they're looking into it. Uh, this is three days ago. I still haven't heard back. So point of the story is not all IP blacklist monitors are created equal. And just because somebody is charging you $80 a month to have the ability to monitor IP blacklist does not mean it's better than the free one. So in my opinion, get over to Hetrix Tools, use their free account. Uh, it has an awesome intuitive dashboard. You would add many, many IPs here. And it, like I said, it's free. And the only stipulation that they ask on free accounts, and this is a very small stipulation, once every 90 days, uh, you just have to log in to Hetrix Tools to keep your free account. Uh, but you'll get you'll be getting emails anytime that the IP blacklist has changed or you've been added to a blacklist. So it's a great tool. I highly recommend it. It's one of those things you just set up and kind of just don't think about. Just remember to log in once every 90 days. Otherwise, uh, no news is good news. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any feedback on this. But uh, thanks again for watching.